Do you want to be good or do you just want to win? That was the first thing he ever said to me and that changed everything. I just got out of the service and I was living in Portland, Maine, well, South Portland. I was one of a group of not terribly good fencers who, who met regularly to try and figure this out. In all, it was a very typical fencing situation. Now, I don't know why everybody thinks that 10 incompetent people equals one competent person. It's like trying to jump over a six foot fence by assembling a team of six people who can jump one foot each. Anyway, what we figured out was that we weren't gonna figure this out on our own. We needed somebody who actually knew what he was doing. So we were able to bring up a real teacher fencing master from Boston, Ed Richards. Now, Major Richards was an excellent fencer and an excellent teacher. Uh, I believe he had won the U.S. Foil Championship in 1962 and 63. Pan American Games, uh, 59, 63, and 67, I believe, where he won a couple of gold medals and a silver medal. He was on the Olympic team in 1964. Then after he turned professional in 1970, he won the gold medal in the foil event at the Fencing Master World Championships. I think that was in London. And his students did a whole lot of winning too. Now all this is just to say that the man knew his way around a blade. And this was at a time when fencing still bore some resemblance to a sword fight. You know? There were rules and there were unwritten rules. And we followed both religiously. You know? But that's another tale to tell. On the side, Major Richards was a dance teacher. And uh, taking, a, taking a lesson from him was like dancing. It was smooth and coherent and connected and self-evident. He made doing this very unnatural thing seem completely natural. So I introduced myself. And instead of, how do you do? He said, do you want to be good or do you just want to win? Well, I was young. I said, what's the difference? And he said, winning is easy. <laughs> he said, people confuse winning with excellence. Winning isn't the definition of excellence. Excellence is the definition of winning. I said, I'm not sure I follow. He explained it like this. Suppose you take six people off the street at random. You know, six people who have never seen a foil before. You bring them in, you suit them up, give them weapons. You tell them, poke the other guy and don't let him poke you. And you turn them loose. What do you think that's going to look like? I suggested it might look like something involving goats. And he agreed. But at the end, he said, somebody is going to win. One of those six people will lose one less bout by being touched one less time than the other five. First place, give him a medal, give him a trophy, call him a champion. You think that was good fencing? I said, uh, I doubt it. He said, so do I. So I'll ask you again, do you want to be good? Or do you just want to win? I said, um, what if I want to be really good? He smiled at me, or <laughs> maybe he was laughing at me, but he said, on guard. Winning is relative. Excellence is absolute. Winning is subjective. Excellence is objective. Excellence doesn't grade on a curve. To win, you measure yourself against an opponent. To be excellent, you measure yourself against an ideal. Now, winning can take hardly any time at all. Excellence will take more time than you've got. Now I have fenced excellently and lost. And even though I lost, I still felt uh, exhilarated, elevated. 
I have also fenced really abysmally <laughs> and won. And that felt like shit. And I'd just as soon forget it, but I won't. You know, in fencing, it used to be standard practice to call touches against yourself or, or to decline credit for touches that you thought were doubtful. Now, everybody did that all the time in practice and in competition. You give your opponent the benefit of any possible doubt. So if you win, it's irrefutable. It's unblemished. And you know damn well you earned it. In our cell arms, we still do that. But apart from us dinosaurs, you rarely ever see that kind of gallantry in fencing anymore. Not for a long time now. And I think that's very sad. You know, sometimes you run into a boxer who has a record of, say, 30 wins and no losses. And he struts around like he's the heir apparent to the greatest of all time. But then you look up who he fought, and you find out it was little kids, cripples, old ladies, and assorted other tomato cans. He's got 30 wins all right, but he's never had any fights. You know, we see this kind of thing a lot with people who are the very, very best of the very, very bad fencers in their particular little circle jerk. They're the biggest fish in a teensy weensy pond, <laughs> where it's all sound and fury and signifying nothing. They may be scarouche compared to the rest of their playmates, but outside that group, that's only worth two things, nothing and nothing. I would encourage you not to settle for chump change. You're better than that, if you want to be. So I'll ask you, as I was asked, do you want to be good? Or do you just want to win? I don't care which one you choose, but you should.